Hi everyone, welcome to today's training session. My name is Kwa Lam and I'm with the Los Angeles County Department of Agricultural Commissioner Weights and Measures. I'm the current deputy for the Pest Detection Program and today we'll be going over some training techniques for the invasive shot hole borer. We'll be looking at trap placement, uh, we're looking at how the bait and the lure works and identifying certain sites for these placements. Let's start. All right, let's first off start off with some uh, trap placement techniques. Uh, first thing you need is uh, we're using a Japanese beetle pole that's already been uh, inserted into the ground. You need your trap uh, insert body card. You need your bait, a zip tie, a stapler, and some sort of identification tag. Here we're just using labels. Um, and then now we're going to go and put it off together. First we're going to be putting the labels onto the trap so that we can identify whose ownership it is. Uh, we have the county trap, what it's for, and uh, some contact information so that the residents know who to contact in case they need uh, any help or have any questions. Okay. Next, we're going to be working with the insert. Go ahead and peel them apart. Take your time with it. It's very sticky and the adhesive is very strong. Of course, during the summer, the adhesive will be a little bit softer. The weather's kind of cool right now in the uh, mid-70s and uh, the glue is still kind of cold. Take your time, separate the two together uh, apart. What you'll notice is that, let me come a little bit closer, is that the trap uh, states that it is for an elm bark beetle. And typically, when uh, this is the case, uh, you're gonna be wrapping this around the trunk of a tree, this way. But we're gonna be repurposing this trap by folding it backwards and then placing it onto this trap. We're gonna take it up close look and show you how that's done. Next, let's look at how to place the bait and the lure on these traps. In the middle of the trap is a place for the lure placement. Uh, we're gonna be using zip ties to feed it through these two holes. This is the uh, current uh, cruciferol lure uh, that is supposed to be a synthetic uh, scent to mask uh, the trap as if it were a, um, an oak tree or some sort of large tree uh, like that. Um, this one particular one is from uh, Chemtica and um, it has two layers, okay? So when you first open the lure, you're gonna pull the lure out and you're gonna notice that there is uh, a nickel sized uh, lure inside a sealed pouch. This itself is the lure. The um, transparent membrane that's on here is semi-permeable so it will be releasing the scent out slowly over the next course of uh, four to six weeks. So um, don't, don't remove this out of this bag. Now you can see at the top, there's an opening. We're gonna be using a zip tie, feeding it through here, and then feeding it through the other two openings that's on the trap. Once you have the lure placed onto the trap, go ahead and feed your zip tie through like this, and complete the tie. And it should just be secured this way. Let's look at trap placement. All right, from here, you're ready to go ahead and mount your trap. Go ahead and take it off the uh, stand here. Go ahead and fold it up along the crease, like so. You're gonna notice there are two holes uh, here and here. And you're gonna be feeding another zip tie through the holes and secure it on this uh, trapping hook right here, on the trapping pole. So, be careful, the trap is very sticky. Uh, if possible, when we do do it in the field, we actually have, we send two inspectors to do it uh, together uh, just to be you know, safe and secure. Uh, here. Feeding it through the trap this way, this way, and then feeding it through. Okay. Now, before you go ahead and zip it up all the way, um, you want to take the next step and go ahead and use your stapler to secure these two parts in. Okay, one second. Take these pieces, put it together, get your stapler in there, and there you go. So together now you have your trap uh, placed. It's secured here up at the top, secured here at the bottom of the staple. You got your lure mounted and identification placed inside. 
Uh, this way, if anybody has any questions uh, or concern, they can go ahead and contact the department. And um, that's it. Thanks so much for uh, trap placement. Thank you. All right, now for the trap removal, the first thing you do is go ahead and cut your zip tie right here. The trap's gonna fall. Go ahead and split open the uh, area where the staple is. You see our contact information is still there. Now, what you wanna do is go ahead and place um, some sort of a, a folded uh, paper towel or a piece of foam in between the trap so that when you go ahead and fold it up, it doesn't crush all your specimens. And then go ahead and transport this back, put it in a bag so it doesn't get glue all over the place. And uh, go ahead and just uh, put it in your bait box and then transport it back to the office safely that way. Go ahead and remove the JB pole, which is pretty straightforward. And then you're done. Let's look at some site identification to see where we can place these traps. If you were to place a trap in a local park, and an ideal place is to kind of place it between multiple trees like this. The concept of this trap is not to place the trap on the tree itself, because if you place the trap with a lure on a healthy tree, you're basically attracting this pest to that tree. So that's not what we want. So this idea of uh, having a Japanese beetle a, a trapping pole with uh, the trap and the lure on it is supposed to uh, mimic the uh, a potential site or host. And uh, that's what we're trying to do. So if you see multiple trees like this, um, this is just at a local park. But if uh, you go into a forest area and you see trees spaced out in this fashion, um, that's a good distribution. Here's another example of a sample site that we had used out in Canoga Park. Uh, you see this is where we placed our traps in this area and you can see these two trees does show some type of uh, distress and that's why we chose it as a potential site to see if uh, we can monitor for invasive shackle borer. All right we're now in Van Nuys in the Sepulveda Basin. We're at this park right here and we found a, a few trees that may have some potential pests on it. Let's zoom in and take a closer look and uh, see if we can uh, identify some of the damage that's done to this tree. Looking at the top of the tree, you will notice that the tree is suffering from decline and dieback. Notice how the leaves have started to fall off and the tree uh, branches look like they're wilting a little bit. Uh, so this decline is the initial phase of a potential uh, shot hole borer infestation. Looking down towards the branches, you might see some staining on the bark. This is another indication of a potential pest that's attacking the tree. Here you can see that there is some staining on the side of the bark. This is from the sap that leaks out when a shot hole borer has bored its way through the tree. Looking at the, this up close picture, we can see the exit hole. And it's a tiny hole that's on the side of the tree. Continue to monitor the rest of the tree to look for other holes and signs of stain and damage. Here I'm holding a sample of an invasive shot hole borer. Here's another look from a different angle. I'm holding a tree branch to show you the exit holes. Notice how small they are compared to other potential holes that you will see in the tree. Here's another section of that same trunk from a different angle. And this is the cross section on the top of the tree. So notice that the beetle not only bored through the sides, but you can also see uh, the tunnels through the cross section as well. Thank you for watching this video. We hope some of this information is useful. If there's any questions, please feel free to contact us and we'll be able to help you out as much as we can. Thank you.